Howdy. I thought about talking about this in the last video already, but I didn't, so I make a own video of this. It won't be long. Wandrium Daily. The fascinating qualities of alkali metals, 14th of May 2022. So it's not that old. By Ron B. Davis Jr. Compounds containing sodium and potassium are very common. When they react with water, they form strong bases called alkalines. The word alkali comes from the Arabic expression for wood ash that has been heated in the absence of oxygen to remove impurities. So the inspiration for the name of the entire alkali metal group is this simple waste product at the end of a wood fire. Ashes. Yes, it has to do with mountain water, wide rivers especially. For example, Tagliamento River in northern Italy is an alkaline river. There are like... Yeah, you know the story. But anyway, I find this very interesting, this article. Because... No, probably... You, I will tell you. <laughs> That's the whole thing about this, of making this video first place. Alkali metals react easily. Some metals can and very often do appear in nature as pure metals. And there are other metals that can be fairly easily isolated from the oxides by heating them in a cold furnace. But group 1 metals like lithium, sodium and potassium are more stubborn when it comes to taking their metallic form. Removal of that outermost electron gives an alkali metal an octet, but also creates a positively charged ion that strongly prefers to hide in compounds with other elements. Chemists measure how difficult it is to remove an electron in terms of how much electrochemical energy must be put into a system to pull the outermost electron away from the neutral metal atom. All chemical reactions are electric in nature. So if you apply charge to it, it will do its thing, it will transmutate. And for the alkali metals, it's very easy. This group accounts for six of the eight lowest first ionization energies of all elements. What this means is that non-metals like oxygen, for example, can very easily react with alkali metals to form ionic metal oxide materials, and the ionic bonds that they are form are very strong. They are so strong that even the usual methods of smelting could never coax their metallic forms from their oxides, or form the touch of aluminis aluminosilicate minerals, in which they appear in great abundance. Found commonly, alkali metals also take the form of ions when they are inside living things. That's something very important. Let's read that again. Alkali metals also take the form of ions when they are inside of living things. Sodium and potassium, for example, are essential nutrients for humans and plants alike. But again, that sodium and potassium is not actually a metallic. Rather, it takes the form of dissolved ions that the body uses to perform needed biological functions. So alkali metals are very common in the ground and even in living things. But their proximity to the noble gas configuration makes them particularly content to give up an electron on and form ions, which conceals them from easy observation. So how do sodium and potassium get into the ashes of a wood fire? Fire is a chemical reaction that adds oxygen to fuel. It's maybe a plasma, releasing useful heat and light in the process. But the byproduct of this process is a fuel that has been oxidized. Now, 
plants like trees contain lots of complex minerals no materials like dna cellulose and proteins these compounds are mostly made of non-metals like carbon, oxygen, sulfur, phosphorus, hydrogen, and nitrogen. But like us, plants also rely on certain metals like potassium and sodium ions to help manage their biochemistry. When the non-metals in a burning log react with oxygen, they tend to form gases. But metals have behaved differently. Because of their position on the far left of the periodic table, they have very low electronegativities. And when they combine with oxygen, they form ionic compounds. These ionic compounds remain solids. So, the act of burning a log helps to isolate metal oxides, which remain solid, from non-metal oxides, which float away into the atmosphere. Only the metal oxides collect in the ashes at the base of the fire where they can be collected. In larger alkali metals, screening of the nucleus from valence electrons by interior electrons makes it easier for valence electrons to be released to any reagent that will take it. This trend is born out of we borne out if we look at the first ionization potential of each alkali metal. With each step down the table, we add a new layer of screening electrons, making the valence electron easier and easier to pull away. The most common way teachers demonstrate this trend is through the reaction of alkali metals with water. This produces alkali metal hydroxides with hydrogen gas as a byproduct. Lithium, sodium and potassium create progressively more vigorous reactions because each loses an electron from a progressively larger energy level in the reaction. The vigorousness with which heat and hydrogen gas are produced increases with lithium producing little more than a fizzle, sodium dancing and popping more aggressively, and potassium often bursting into flames. Rubidium and cesium react even more aggressively. Their explosions may sometimes appear less spectacular, but this is only because the metal itself is ripped apart in the reaction so far that no significant hydrogen can accumulate. How do we obtain these metals? So we have established that all alkali metals are too reactive to occur as pure metals in nature. I bet beneath our feet they are. There are pockets of these kind of pure metals somewhere stored beneath the mountains, beneath our feet somewhere. Maybe so deep no one ever found them. But... But there is everything to be found in nature, I guess. Much more than in any lab on Earth. But anyway. However, lithium, sodium and potassium metals can be easily produced by electrolysis and stored under mineral oils that protect them from oxygen and water. Yeah, we have oil in the ground too. And electromagnetic currents. Teller currents. Removing the oil or creating a freshly exposed metal surface by cutting the sample causes the exposed metal to quickly tarnish and it reacts with oxygen and moisture in the air itself. Rubidium and cesium, however, require even more careful handling. Samples of these elements are often stored in sealed ampules to be certain that no oxygen or moisture or whatsoever can reach the sample. Now that the calcium is free, <laughs> cesium is sometimes even stored as cesium acide, a compound of cesium and nitrogen that can be heated to release the metal when it's needed, avoiding the tricky task of storing the periodically reactive metal itself. So anyway, uh, 
this one sentence I read twice. So, alkali metals are very common in the ground and even in living things. This is the sentence. Alkali metals also take the form of ions when they are inside living things. Let me search quickly a picture. In living things. Earth is a living thing, you know, as are you. It's just much bigger. This is how I see the thing about this. Alkali metals also take the form of ions when they are inside living things. Sodium and potassium, for example, are essential nutrients for humans and plants alike. Probably also for Earth. Keeping it alive, keeping the water coming out from the ground and stuff like that. Maybe, I don't know. But I leave it here. If you know the answer to this question or whatsoever, tell me. What is up with the white rivers and calcium and hydrogen gas and water in general ah, yeah there's much like the earlier video about the groundwater they are surprised about the amount of groundwater I've been talking about this cryptodomes they're all over the place which are they are actually volcanoes as are probably glaciers too they're just lava flows made of water so obvious no one ever figured it out ah. I probably did. Maybe. I don't know. But I just thought I threw it in here because it happens to be this kind of epiphany thing. I grew up in Switzerland. I have been on glaciers. I know how they look. But this ha it has been a long time ago. Today I would look totally different at them if I could be there. If I could go around, it would be a total different thing. <laughs> and what a thing it would be. So, that's just another little part in the collection of evidences for mountain water, wide rivers, and cryptodomes, crypto geysers, and all these kind of things. Alkali metals take the form of ions when they are inside living things, so Earth is a living thing. And if they are ions, they are tied to some whatever electromagnetic charge. If it's a sphere and they are ions, they will move with the size of the sphere according to the charge, which is induced by the sun, which is induced or like coupled to the center of our galaxy and probably the center of our galaxy is coupled to whatever bigger stronger field sphere we are in scalability it goes down to the very smallest parts of everything atoms such but anyway i leave it here thanks bye